Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about monoliths, unions, and avoiding them. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a junior developer, should I try to avoid monolithic projects, especially those with really old mysterious code that nobody really knows what's, what it's doing? And the short answer is no. I don't think so, and I don't think it's possible to do this. Let me explain. So, I made a video a while back with GIFs, which makes, the, makes that video extra special, where I answer the question, are all projects ugly? And my answer in that video is yes. There is no such project as a project that has no ugly code, at least not a non-trivial trivial one. It's, it's not possible to build a project that isn't ugly in some fashion. And the reason why it's not possible is because if you meet success in the IT world, like a really beautiful, well-maintained project is usually not a product that gets used all that much. If you look at some of the most beloved, if we look at, look at it from the, the academic perspective, languages and projects and so forth, they don't have a fraction of the adoption as some of the less beloved languages and solutions and so forth. And I argue that the reason behind that is because the, the success that is met when a company actually gets somewhere with their code is going to result in a lot of changes, a lot of features, a lot of new developments within the code. And that's very natural because a company that grows is going to take on more projects, they're going to take on more features, they're going to have new stakeholders and different desires and they are going to have coordination problems. And any code base that grows is going to grow very much as a tree. It's going to start as a simple trunk and then it's going to start to branch out. And this is an organic experience or it's an, orga it's an or organic thing. It's, an, it's not possible because you, that's the problem, right? If you want to have something perfect, then you need to design it from the, with the perspective that this is how it's going to work. You have to have a holistic perspective of how the whole thing is going to be built. And that is extremely hard when you don't know what the future is going to hold for your project. So it's almost inevitable that some parts of the system are going to be a bit ugly. Now, there are some situations where there's more ugly code and less ugly code. Absolutely, there are some products that are so horrendous that it's, oh, I mean, you just want to cry. And then there are some products who are, well, they're not perfect, but they kind of get the job done. And most developers agree on that. Well, it would be nicer if we did A, B and C, but it still works, right? That's the normal case, honestly, I would say. The normal case is usually that there's a lot of stuff that you want to improve, but you don't because you have other stuff that you need to do and it still kind of works. It doesn't really block you. And as a junior developer, you should embrace this. Now, I'm not saying that you should go and try to find like the ugliest and the worst projects, because that's not what that's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm trying to say that you should brace yourself for that this is the reality of this industry. Avoiding legacy code, that, that is impossible. Like you should definitely think about, rethink your choices in like job positions, as I've said in other videos, if you are let's say left to maintain a really old legacy monolith alone. You have no one else to help you, or maybe you have another coworker who doesn't either know how all of this works. That should definitely be something that causes you a little bit of concern because if you're left alone on a large project with really, really old code that you don't know what it's doing and you have no way, and this is like the horror show of work, work positions for a lot of people, this person included, because when you, when you have really bad legacy code, you can't Google for the solution. That's the worst part about it. If you have a standard problem where let's say that you want to sort an array or you want to add items to something or you don't know how a certain feature works from a framework, you can look up that information on Stack Overflow and you can look it up on Google or YouTube or wherever, right? Wherever you find this information because other people have had this problem. But if you have a, let's say a network call somewhere to an external system that you don't own that just fails, 
for some reason, there is no way for you to figure out what's going on. Apart from reading the code and seeing that, oh, okay, I got that thing and I sent, I sent in that thing and I got this thing back, but it's supposed to work that way. At least from the outdate, outdated documentation. So something must have changed or something is not right. And I, you have, if you have no way of talking to anybody to figure out what's expected from this feature, you're, you're kind of you're just going to have to sit there and just try random stuff if that's even possible. <laughs> and sometimes it's not. I have been in this situation more than once. And the worst situation, situation I was in it was when I didn't even own the source code to the thing I was supposed to work on. I had to reverse engineer. I had to decompile the code and sit and read the decompiled code. That's what I had to do. It was a horror show to sit there and just try to figure out all these like one letter variables and like how, how does all of this sit, all of this work together in a fairly substantial application. And the, the, I'm not going to lie to you, it, will, it sucked. It really, really sucked. But I did learn something from it, though I don't think that you as a junior developer should go down that route if you can avoid it. So I suppose that what I think that you should have with you, like I think that just the mindset should be that don't try to like figure out, like when you're trying to get a job, like don't try to sit there and figure out if they have legacy code because they're not going to tell you that they have legacy code. And it's not, it's not sustainable for you to have the idea that no, I'm just going to pick and work on projects where there's no legacy or there's no problems. Like I don't think that that's so important. What I think is most important to you is, is that you have peers or you have experienced co-workers that can guide you through the legacy. There are some systems that are old and some people on the internet, they will tell you that, oh, I work in a shit system. And I promise you, if, uh, if uh, let's say that I were to come in there, I could probably go, go in and look at the code and say that, well, no, it's just, I wouldn't say that this is shit. It's just written in a language you don't like. And then they're going to go, well, but yeah, but they're using Java and we should be using something else. And that's why it's shit. Uh, that's the problem. What's legacy? What is legacy? Some people, is, there's, this, <laughs> there's a joke about this, which is, they, it goes, everything that I didn't write is legacy. And that's the fa fact of the matter. Some people say it was, it's legacy is subjective, guys. It's very subjective. Some people will say that anything that is written in, I don't know, Java, well, that's practically legacy because Java is a shit language. So what is legacy? So, uh, and that, that's why I want you to understand that as a junior developer, odds are that it's going to be very hard for you <clears throat> to figure out if you're dealing with a really old legacy system. So. Even even when you're in the interviewing stage, like it's impossible. Like you're, if you ask the question, "Do you have legacy code?" Like the, nobody's going to be able to give you a comprehensible answer. They might say yes, depending on their interpretation, and then you might go, "Oh, well, I shouldn't take this job then, right?" And then you might pass up a really good chance of working with some really experienced developers who can teach you to become a really great developer. And in another company, they might say, oh, no, we don't have any legacy because in their company, well, they're using Node.js with Next.js and all the other hundreds of frameworks out there. And of course, we don't have legacy because the person who's answering your question is this unknowing, like low level, say, inexperienced developer who just thinks that no, because he, he wrote all the code, so he knows how everything works. But it, to you, it's basically just Un incomprehensible to him. He knows ex absolutely everything, but he's just been doing this forever. And to him, there's, there's no problem because everything is in his head, right? And I've been on a project where th that was literally the case. This person had basically just copy pasted all of his implementations over a massive repository and obf obfuscated all the all the code, nobody knew what was going on. And he didn't tell anybody that he had a master version of that code in a private repository. That's like he that's how he did all of this. He literally just used the master version and then he, everybody else had to deal with his, the um, the copy paste from his master version because he didn't have any knowledge of, of version controls and working as a team any of that stuff. So it became incomprehensible. So what I want you to take away from this is that 
I don't think that you should avoid or or ha I don't think you should have the mindset that you should want to avoid working with legacy systems because it's impossible. You are always going to have code that is bad. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you work. I promise you, legacy code exists everywhere. It's, it exists in Google as well, like Facebook, all of your favorite IT companies. It's at all levels. It's impossible to build a legacy-free system. Now. What I think that you should do is that you should always make sure that you have people around that can help you with your work so that you can collaborate. Because if you're alone on a really old legacy project where nobody knows how, what's going on, all of a sudden you're going to damage your learning and that's not a great thing. But I don't think that you should have the idea that you're going to ask at a job interview or something like that, do you have legacy? Because you're never going to get a good answer. Either they're never going to admit that they have legacy code or they're going to admit it and you might pass up on an opportunity where you think like where you don't understand what they mean because <clears throat> it's impossible. When I say, oh, this is legacy, it's impossible for you to know how bad the situation is. It is something it's it's something that you have to kind of experience for yourself. You have to go in, see how it feels and then make an evaluation. And that's how I think that you should deal with this. If, you're, if you have a great job opportunity, try it out, see how it goes, and if you're actually in that situation where you have to maintain a system that is so bad that you don't know what's going on and you feel that it's damaging your personal development, then yes, maybe you should quit and get a different position somewhere else there where your learning capacity is higher. But don't start out that way because I promise you, even if you quit that job and go into the next job, odds are that you're going to find legacy there as well. Have a great day.